Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Muller here for your Hurricane 2022 Outlook. That's right, here it is. This is the time for it. And I'll break down all the factors here. This moderate La Nina, what is gonna happen with this? Is it gonna strengthen? Is it gonna hold its own? Or is it gonna weaken? And exactly what's going on with our sea surface temperatures, especially closer to land in the Gulf of Mexico and the US East Coast. Let's break it all down for you. Are we gonna see a major blockbuster season like the last several? I think so. Let's take a look here. We'll start with the names here, Alex, all the way through Walter. Take a look at this. We could be looking at a possibility of smashing through this entire list. And what does that mean? That means we could eventually go on to the backup names that the National Hurricane Center has set aside in case we see a blockbuster major year, which I think is gonna happen. Let's take a look at my numbers here. And if we take a look here, my numbers here on the left, and here on the right are the averages. Are we, have we seen an average season in quite some time? I don't think we have. It's been quite a while. We have to go back several years to get to those numbers. But here on the left, I'm forecasting 22 named storms for this hurricane season. That is well, well above average. And if we take a look here, 11 of those I believe will become hurricanes. And of those hurricanes, six of those I'm thinking will become major hurricanes. Now, why are my predicting here such a blockbuster major year? We, the last several years have been terrible. We've been well above average. In fact, 2020 really proved that, that we're in a hurricane cycle here that is on the uptick. And we continue to see us push higher every year with some of these storms and the intensities as well. So let's actually break down all the numbers here for you. And taking a look at the ENSO chart here, what do we have going on here? So if you see, there's a large spread in the models here, but what's going on here is La Nina is definitely gonna stay prevalent through this entire hurricane season. And what does that mean for the forecast here? Well, if we continue to hold our own here at least, say we stay the same, we will see quite a blockbuster of storms here, a parade of storms forming off the Cape Verde Islands and continuing across the Atlantic Ocean. So even if we just slightly weaken it, we're still going to be in a well above average season. Now, if we actually cool the waters down even faster, guess what we're looking at here? We are looking at a potential of a much more robust hurricane season than even last year, because this La Nina is looking to stay a little bit more robust here. And popular tracks, here we go. Take a look at this. Yep, you're seeing that right. The Gulf of Mexico is gonna be under the gun here, open for business here across the Gulf of Mexico. That's why I have you in the reds and the fuchsia colors here. This is going to be a big problem here if you live in the Gulf. I'm very concerned about the Gulf as well as off the US East Coast as well. You gotta watch those stalled out frontal boundaries, especially later on in the season. Also down here in the Caribbean, the Western Caribbean, especially later on in the season, watch out for a couple hurricanes down here as well. I'm not counting you out here in the Caribbean. And look at this, the Cape Verde season through the Caribbean islands here. You're gonna wanna watch this because this is gonna be a big hurricane season here. Lots of tropical waves here coming off the coast of Africa. And I expect a much more robust uh, intertropical convergence zone out here into the Atlantic. So watch out here. If you're in any of the Caribbean islands, some of these storms could actually propagate their way into the Caribbean. And here's some popular storm tracks as well. Don't focus on any one storm, but these are the popular storm tracks you could see during a season such as this. So here we go. Here's the sea surface temperatures. If you take a look here, the Gulf of Mexico, this is exactly what we're looking at here. This does not look, this does not bode well because we're already seeing sea surface temperatures warming much quicker than average for this time of year. So if you are in the Gulf of Mexico, you're gonna watch here because things are really gonna kick off pretty quickly here. Also along the US East Coast as well. Take a look at the La Nina factors here. We're taking a look at sea surface temperatures here off the South American coast. You can actually see for yourself that there is a cold pool of water here, and that's averaging out to anywhere from a half a degree Celsius below average to as much as one degree Celsius below average here as well. And if we take a look actually here at the graph, take a look at this graph. This actually is showing the temp water here cooling 
to as much as negative one degree Celsius. So this is, here's our proof here. This is the proof that we're gonna see this La Nina potentially continue to hold its own or strengthen. And why are we going to see such a robust hurricane season with some of these holding together from the African coastline, from the Cape Verdes, all the way across the Atlantic? Well, it has to do with La Nina much less vertical wind shear. When you have an El Nino, of course, you see a lot more vertical wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That disrupts the hurricane circulations, and guess what? During an El Nino year, the Gulf of Mexico, for instance, is definitely not open for business, but guess what? This year, it definitely is, again, with no El Nino in sight, moderate La Nina at least maybe going stronger. We are looking at this big red and fuchsia area across the Atlantic pretty much from the Cape Verdes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast and encompassing most of the Caribbean and Southern Atlantic as well. This is well below average vertical wind shear and this ultimately means these storms will be allowed to travel from the African coastline all the way across the Atlantic towards the North American continent. All right, jumping over to the analytical weather desk here, take a look at what we have going on here in the high pressure systems what i'm going to be looking at further west earlier in the season and then as we head throughout the later part of the season it's going to be progressing eastward here so june through august especially the early section we'll watch a lot of these systems being pushed further west now they could be weaker uh, but nevertheless, they could strengthen pretty rapidly once they reach the Western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, where those sea surface temperatures are really, really, really warm, you know, well above average. And here, as we get towards the mid part of the season, the East Coast, watch out for this. Some of these will be trying to arc up the East Coast, you know, as we head towards August and September. You know, some of these start to recurve towards Bermuda as well. And then as we get towards September and October, we'll see more recurving going on. And this is part of the season where we start to see more in the way of stronger systems. And as you know, stronger systems, they do want to hook more northerly and then eventually easterly. So this could take a lot of the bigger systems away from the United States. But as I said, this is no guarantee because, you know, positionings of highs and lows jet streams they all change there can be trends but we have to watch as we saw before it only takes one major hurricane to make the entire season it could make it a tremendous season we look at 1992 with hurricane andrew just one storm the entire one hurricane major storm the entire season and look what it did two major landfalls so don't focus on any one point, but this is the trends we're looking at. So early in the season, we're already going to start to get here pretty quickly oriented uh, with tropical seasons. So it's going to be a pretty quick pickup here, and this is exactly what we're looking at here with the positioning of these high-pressure systems. They always tend to retreat. I think this season will be more pronounced further to the west initially. Um, and then eventually we'll slowly retreat towards the Azores here, as usually does happen, but I think it'll be a little bit slower of a process, so we'll have to watch, you know, the United States and North America uh, for these as well. Bermuda, you're not out of the woods either. You know, you've had quite a few hits in the past several years. Right, so this last thing I wanted to show you here is really troubling here for the Gulf of Mexico. This is why I emphasized at the beginning of my segment here the Gulf of Mexico, we got a lot going for us for a big, tremendous uh, hurricane season. Look at this. This is an excess of about 2.8, 3.6, right here in the bullseye, almost 5 degrees Celsius above average here. It's getting, it, you know, we're pushing pretty high here uh, this early in the season, and it's not even officially started. Uh, most of the Gulf of Mexico is running anywhere from 1.2 up to 2 degrees Celsius at least. That is very troubling. And, you know, you combine that with a moderate La Nina, we're definitely uh, going to see some problems here. And off the southeast coast, you know, you're running about 1.2 to 2 degrees Celsius. And throughout the rest of the Atlantic here, you know, your average here in the white. And then look at this. You got big, av you know, right around the fringes here. This is anywhere from about a, a degree to a degree and a half Celsius above average. So, you know, taking all this into account, this is definitely going to be a major hurricane season and keep it tuned here to medium marks hurricane eastern and weather eastern i'll keep you every each storm that comes out i'll keep you up to date on it where i think it's going to go and even before the storm forms you know i'll be on top of it here 
And also, if you uh, if you want to keep tuned to tropical updates throughout the weather season, I will fine tune my hurricane outlooks as well. I usually do about two or three throughout the season. Thank you for joining me for this Hurricane 2022 Outlook here at Media Marks Hurricane Eastern. As always, don't forget, I have social media pages. I'm also Facebook at Media Mark, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. You can also find me on Facebook at Hurricane Northeastern. So if you want to follow my hurricane page as well, MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. As always, don't forget to subscribe down below, smash that bell button. I'll keep you alert this hurricane season. and. Question or comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts on this hurricane season and how active you think it could be as well.